to interrupt his heat, and my name is Clement. And today, we're going to talk about climbing. Before we talk about how to actually do a climb, we'll start by talking different types of climb. The first one to cover is the X, best angle of climb. This climb allows the aircraft to climb at the maximum angle relative to the ground. Why do we need to climb at the best angle of climb, you may ask? If there are tall obstacles at the end of the runway, like tall buildings or tall trees, in order to keep clear of those obstacles, we have to adopt a climb which allows us to gain the most height in the shortest ground distance, which is the best angle of climb, VX. The next climb is called VY, best rate of climb. This is the climb that gains the most height under a certain amount of time. It is also one of the most used type of climb because we want to gain the most amount of height as soon as possible. In case of an emergency, we'll have more time to react. The last one is called V Cruise, Cruise Climb. It is more of a gentle climb, less sporty and more comfortable because of the sheer lower attitude and climb angle. And because of that, the aircraft will be climbing at a faster speed, which is good when you are in the cruise phase of the flight. And because of the faster airspeed and lower attitude, it allows us to have a better forward visibility for looking out for other traffic and also for better engine temperature management. So when you use it, when we're clear of the ground obstacles and we're at the safe height, we we'll adopt a cruise climb attitude until we reach our cruise altitude. And those are the different types of climbs. During a climb, there are different forces acting on a plane. It's quite similar to what we've learned in the last episode, straight and level. Now, let's have a look at different forces. The first one, weight. The force that is acting against weight is the lifting force generated by the weight. The third force is when the aircraft is traveling forward through the air, it experiences air resistance, or we call drag. And to against that, we have the force that is generated by our engine, thrust. However, when an aircraft is in a climb, there will be changes to those four forces. During a climb, the angle of the wing changes. And because the angle of the wing changes, the direction of the lift, instead of pointing vertically up, would now be tilting back. Under this condition, lift will be less than weight. We can also split weight into two portions. The first portion, we can name it weight 1. It follows the vertical axis of the aircraft. The second portion, weight 2, from the tip of weight number 1 to the weight line and it is acting backward. What you can see here is that weight 2 is parallel to the drag line. And because they are parallel, we can reposition weight 2 line to be behind the drag line. Because of that, you can see lift and weight 1 is equal. Also, during a climb, we change our power setting to full power for a climb. So from our normal cruise thrust, because now we're adding more power to full power, we'll have more thrust, and we call the additional thrust excess thrust. Now if you look at the diagram as a whole, the total amount of thrust, which is thrust plus the excess thrust, equates to the force of the drag plus weight number 2. Also, lift is equal to weight 1. In conclusion, there will be no net forces, just like straight and level, and we call this state equilibrium. During a climb, there will be a lot of different variables that affect the climb performance. In order to judge how well we're climbing, we have to quantify the climbing performance, and there are two main indications. They are the angle of climb and the rate of climb. The angle of climb is the angle between the flight path and the ground, and the unit for that would be in degrees. The rate of climb can be defined as the vertical speed that the aircraft is climbing, and the unit for that would be in feet per minute. So what sort of factors affect the climbing performance? Now, let's imagine we have two aircrafts, identical aircrafts. The first one carry two people, and the second one carry four people. Let's assume everyone weighs the same, so the latter one will be heavier. Because the aircraft is heavier, it will have less climb performance. But how can we tell that when we are flying inside the cockpit? The vertical speed indicator inside the cockpit shows how fast we are climbing vertically. Which is the rate of climb that we have talked about earlier. If it's faster, that means we have a better climb performance. And if it's slower, that means we have less climb performance, just like the heavier aircraft. The second factor to talk about is air density. When an aircraft is climbing to a higher altitude, the air density decreases. When the air density decreases, it will adversely affect the power output of the engine and the lift generation of the wing. Because there is less air for the engine to combust, therefore less power, and for the wing, there is
is less air for it to work on to generate lift. And because of the decreasing power and lift, the gain in altitude will lead to a drop in climbing performance. The third one is wind. When we're climbing in headwind, the angle of climb will be steeper. On the other hand, when we're climbing in a tailwind, the angle will be shallower. That is exactly why normally during takeoff, we take off into the wind, allowing us to climb at a steeper angle of climb to avoid contact with tall buildings or trees. However, the rate of climb will not be affected by the wind at all. That is because the wind is horizontal and it doesn't affect our vertical gain over time. And that is why even when there is a headwind, near wind or tailwind, the rate of climb will be the same. The fourth factor to talk about is the flaps. Normally during takeoff, takeoff flap will be lowered. That is because flap can provide more lift for the aircraft, so it is able to lift off sooner at a lower speed. However, during a climb, the pilot will retract the flap at a safe height. That is because not only flap increases the lift production, but also increases the drag. As a result, flaps reduces climb performance. The fifth one to talk about is the power output from the engine. When we're using all the available power from the engine, our aircraft will achieve the best climbing performance. However, if we're not using all the power from the engine during a climb, our climb performance will be reduced. Now, let's move on to the practical side of things. We'll talk about some of the work cycle that will help us to climb an aircraft in a climbing exercise. For pre-entry, the work cycle is H-A-L. H, heading. We want to nominate a heading and set it in the heading bar to remind ourselves during the exercise. A, altitude. This time it will be slightly different than what we have done previously in the Australian level. Before, we used to set the current altitude, but in this case, when we climb, we'll set the climbing altitude that we want to climb to. For example, we have maintained 2,500 feet. Our altitude bug should be at 2,500 feet before we start climbing. So let's say we've been instructed to climb 4,500, we'll now change our altitude bug to 4,500. We're doing this to remind ourselves during the climb that we'll be leveling off at 4,500. L, lookout. So we have to clear the area that we're climbing to before we climb. So you'll be looking to the left, center, center, right, and most importantly, up, because that's where we're going. After the pre-entry cycle, it'll be the entry cycle. And this entry cycle for the climb is a bit different than straight in level. P, A, S, T, P, power. For this occasion, we we'll apply full power. Please remember the correct sequence for applying power. When we're increasing power, pitch lever first, then throttle, blue to black, right to left. A, attitude. Depends on the type of climb we're performing. When we're performing a cruise climb, the correct attitude is about the horizon on the dashboard. When we are doing a best spread of climb, we will raise the nose until the attitude is about the horizon intersecting the middle of the standby instruments. For best angle of climb, raise the nose more until the horizon rests on the top portion of the G1000 screen. S. Speed. For cruise climb, the speed should settle at about 90 knots. For best rate of climb, about 80 knots. For best angle of climb, about 70 knots. In order to achieve the attitude that we've just mentioned, we have to raise our nose. But how do we raise our nose? By applying back pressure on the control stick. Because we've been applying back pressure and we want to maintain our climb attitude, we have to trim back to maintain the correct climbing attitude. So now, we've entered the climb. The next phase is the maintenance cycle to maintain the climb. And the correct work cycle for that is ALAP. Attitude, lookout, attitude, performance. So A, attitude. Depends on what climb we're doing, we'll be maintaining the corresponding climbing attitude. L. Lookout. We'll be clearing up ahead for traffic and obstacles, making sure there's no danger to proceed our climbing exercise. Back to A again. Attitude. Just like the first one, we're maintaining our correct climbing attitude. Depends on our climb. P. Performance. If you remember, in your pre-entry cycle, we have set our heading bug and altimeter bug. Now we'll be checking for our heading, whether we've been maintaining the correct heading throughout the whole climbing exercise. Our altimeter to see how much left we have to climb to. Also for our speed to see whether we're maintaining the correct speed. Lastly, our engine parameters to making sure all the indications are within the normal range so we can conduct and keep going with our climbing exercise. The next phase of climb is crucial, which is the exit cycle. In this phase, we'll be stopping our climb and we'll resume flying straight and level. 
And how do we do it? The work cycle for this is ASPT. Attitude, speed, power, trim. A attitude. In order to transit from a climbing attitude to a strand level attitude, we have to lower our nose. But how do we do it? We push forward on a control stick until the horizon is about four fingers on top of the dashboard. S speed. For speed, we want to speed up to our normal cruise speed, which is 120 knots. How do we do it? Remember, when we are climbing, we have full power. When we have just lower our nose, with full power, naturally, the speed will build up. And we will let it build up to about 120 knots. P. Power. When the speed is increasing and passing about 100 knots, we can start to work the power back. Our normal cruise power setting is 22 inches of manifold pressure and 2200 RPM. So when we bring the power back, remember to pull the throttle lever first, then the pitch lever. Left to right, black to blue. T. Trim. In the beginning of this phase, we have lowered our nose to full fingers attitude. How do we do that? By applying forward pressure on the control stick. However, keep moving on with our trend level, we don't want to keep applying pressure. And that's why we'll be trimming forward. We'll trim until the aircraft is able to fly steadily at full fingers attitude without us constantly applying pressure on the control stick. We'll now demonstrate how to climb in an aircraft. To initiate a climb, the first work cycle is pre-entry HAL. H is heading, so now we maintain 080 degree. Altitude, we are climbing to 3,500 feet. L look out left, center, center, right, and up. No traffic, so now we can start our entry cycle. P-A-S-T. So power, when we climb, we apply full power. Don't forget, when we're flying DA-40 like this one, it has a lever. So when we apply full power, we'll push the pitch lever first. And you can see the RPM increases. Then we'll push the uh, throttle lever. And you can see the manifold pressure increases as well. A is for attitude. We'll raise the attitude until the horizon is on the dashboard for our cruise climb. Speed will settle at around 90 knots. You may notice that I'm applying a lot of right rudder. That's because when a single engine aircraft has high power setting, a lot of rudder is required to keep the aircraft going straight. Also, you may see I'm pulling back quite hard on the stick. If I let go, the aircraft will pitch down quite drastically. That's why we have to use the trim. We've been pulling back, so we will be trimming back until we can let go of the stick and the attitude will be remained at the same. And that's how we know the aircraft is trimmed correctly. When we have entered a climb, the next stage is ALAP. Attitude, zero fingers, horizon on a dash. Look out left, center, center, and right, all clear. Attitude is still the same. Performance, my heading is a little bit off, but I'll correct it. Also, you can see I have another 100 feet to reach 3,500 feet. So I'll start to lower the nose and use the ASPT work cycle. So now attitude is four fingers. Speed is increasing because we are having full power. When the speed reaches around 100 knots, we can start to reduce power. The sequence of reducing power is complete opposite of what we have done earlier when we're adding power. We'll pull the throttle back first, down to around 23 inches. You can see it on the screen. Then pitch lever down to 2400 RPM. What you can see is when I reduce the RPM, the manifold pressure would increase for about an inch to 24 inches. That's why we reduced the manifold pressure for an extra inch initially, because we have to anticipate that. Also, during the climb, we had a lot of back trim, and I'm actually applying quite a bit of force pushing the stick forward. If I let go of the stick, you can see the nose pitches up quite a bit. And that's not what we're looking for, so we'll be using a bit of forward trim. Until it remains the same attitude, so now the plane is trimmed, and there's ASPT. After this, we should have leveled off, so now we can focus on our strain level, which is a lap. Attitude, lookout, attitude, performance. And that's climbing. Now, it's time for threat and error management. So when we're climbing, what are the potential threats that we may encounter? 
When we're starting a climb, essentially we're changing in directions. We have to look out. Instead of just looking horizontally, left, center, center, and right, most importantly, we have to look up, because that's where we're going. Remember to look up to clear off traffic and obstacles. The second key point is power adjustment. During our climbing exercise, we'll be playing around with the power setting quite a bit. So it's important for us to remember the correct sequence for adjusting power, so we don't damage the engine. And those are some of the threats that we may face today in the climbing exercise. And that's it for today. Please don't forget to subscribe to our Learn With Lies YouTube channel for more great content. And follow us on Facebook and Instagram. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers. Mm -hmm.